Hi, good afternoon. I'm the coach. I'm Ellen McQueen, Brother McQueen, Mr. McQueen. Welcome to Bread for Our Youth Ministry. And today, we're going to talk about thoughts. We're talking about thoughts. How do certain thoughts get in our minds? And how thoughts, when the negative thoughts affect us, and how positive thoughts affect us, and how do we get those thoughts, and how those thoughts affect what we do. But before we go into it, I always like to start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you right now, Lord, I pray that you give me the word, God, that will touch every heart. Right now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, someone right now, Lord, needs to be touched and delivered from many seeds of negativity, seeds that have been placed in their mind by Satan, God. And those thoughts have to come out, Lord, and be, and be replaced with your word, Heavenly Father. We pray, God, that it, this, this is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the title of our lesson today is going to be Getting Deliverance from a Defeated Attitude. The title of our lesson today is going to be Getting, de get in, getting Deliverance from a Defeated Attitude. We'll take a look at the picture here for a minute there. This would say that a picture was a thousand words. Do you ever find yourself, you ever find yourself sometimes uh, you ever find yourself sometimes looking like this? You know, hand on your head, hands down, you know, or like this. This is the title of the lesson, getting, del getting Deliverance from a Defeated Attitude. Ever wonder where, that, where those thoughts of defeat come from? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that. Getting delivered from a defeated attitude. Getting delivered from a defeated attitude. Getting delivered from a defeated attitude. The script, these, here are, these are the scriptures we're going to be talking about today. And you might, you have a minute to go ahead and write those scriptures down if you, if you desire to. You can write those down. First, we're going to talk about evil seeds. Evil seeds. Evil seeds. Now, what you have to, we have to understand here is that we're talking about seeds. Because that was a, that originally that's what you had. Originally they were seeds. But once they began to grow, they become like plants. And these seeds that were planted in our minds, they were planted for many reasons. Some were planted so that we would always think negative of ourselves. Some were planted that we would always think hot, more highly of ourselves than other people. Some were planted mostly though that we would live a defeated life. That everything that we try to do, nothing was going to turn out right. That we were un underprivileged children, and we were underprivileged, that we, nothing would ever go right in our life. If negative seeds cause us to have an attitude of poverty. An attitude of poverty. We're going to find out today that it's in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, 25, 26. We're going to find out who it was that planted, that planted negative seeds. Now, what I'm going to do because God needs me to do this, you may find yourself here, and that's what I want you to do. You may find yourself here when I read some of these off, and that's what needs to happen. We need to find ourselves, and then we need to go to God and say, God, I need help in this area. You may be one who there have been seeds of unforgiveness that have been sold in your life. And now those seeds now, God, these seeds have now become plants. See, okay, now depression. Seeds of deception have been sown in your life. Where people have been lying to you for many years. Seeds of insecurity. But now you feel, as a young woman, young man, you feel very insecure. As a young woman, you may not be able to maintain a relationship because you feel insecure in yourself. And you got to get to the root of it and find out why I feel insecure and talk the root out. See the failure, where you expect to fail. You don't expect the thing to go right for you. You expect to fail. See the failure. See the doubt. 
The Bible says, "Whatever is not a face is, if it's not a face, is sin, and doubt is doubt is sin." Seeds of poverty. You may have poverty. Seeds of poverty were sown into your life. Well, mom didn't get to college, dad didn't get to go, this one didn't get to go, this one got divorced, this one got separated. So you know what? My relationship got to turn out the same way. Those are seeds that enemy sowed into you a long time ago. Now, again, these seeds that were sown into us were all sown at different times. Some were sown into our life. Maybe when you were, maybe you were in elementary school, you may have been a young girl. You may be a, you may be one of the most beautiful girls in the school. But people picked on you. And so you didn't see how beautiful you were. All you remember was how people picked on you, and now you remember that today. Now you may be an adult today, and you have low self-image of yourself because those seeds were planted. Those seeds were planted. Seeds of uh, jealousy. You may have been around a family of people who always envy other people, and you had, you had seeds of jealousy that was sown in your life, and now when people, the good thing that other people you have a hard time being happy for them. See the frustration. You may have been in a home or an environment where you see people were always frustrated. And now you believe that, that, that that's the way to be. That's the norm because that's the way you brought up. You feel that being frustrated is the norm. It's a part of everyday life. And all these are lies from the enemy. Seeds of laziness. You procrastinate a lot. Those seeds were in there a long time ago. Those seeds, those seeds of the planet. Let somebody else do it. Let somebody else take care of you. That's why you have so many men that may be lazy. They may have a lazy seed because they, they may have had a male figure in their life who was very lazy and was trifling, and so they're falling that same bloodline. Seeds of our seeds of rejection. Somewhere in your life you may have been rejected in some areas, and then and then that seed grows, and you've been rejected, and then now. You feel like, you know what, no matter what I do, I'm going to be rejected. You expect to be rejected. Those are seeds of now growing into plants, and you've got to pluck them up from the root. Okay, seeds of uh, defeat. Again, you go out for a test, you go for a test, you are looking for a husband, or you're looking for a wife, whatever, and you feel, you know what, you, you got, but this seed that these thoughts and you're telling you, it's not going to work out. Those are seeds of the enemy of planting, and you now become plants. they got to be plucked out. Seeds of discord. You, you have seeds of discord with me and you sow, you sow discord among your brethren. You tell lies on this one, you tell lies on this one, and you cause people to separate. So that's suicidal seeds. Many of you may have known someone who took, commit suicide. You may have known several people who commit suicide. And then those seeds of suicidal thoughts have now become a part of your mind, you because now, you're in a pressure situation, the enemy is trying to tell you to take your life. See the fear, young lady. You may be a, have a fear to open up to a young man that God sent for you because you figured the other guy that you were, they lied to you. So now you fear that this one's going to be the same way. And that one that God sent you now might be Prince Charming. He may be the one, and you may be running him off. See the bitterness. You've been mistreated by people in the past, and you know what? You, have, you feel bitter. I'm not going to trust this one. I'm not going to trust this one. Everybody's the same. Those are negative seeds, but they've now become plants and they got to be plucked out. Okay, seeds of uh, disobedience. When you're very young, seeds of disobedience. Got in trouble in elementary school. Got in trouble in middle school. Got in trouble as a teenager. Got in trouble as an adult. You had a big problem with, uh, with authority because those, se those seeds of rebellion what thoughts were placed in your mind by Satan to rebel against your parents, rebel against the teacher, and those seeds got to come out. Seeds of disrespect. Seeds of drunkenness. You may have been in a household or you may have had family members who just lived up when they were young. Dr uh, you may have been around a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, a lot of prostitution, and all those things. And you may not have been taking part of the thing, but those seeds are starting to take, are starting to grow, and, and it's starting to grow to the roots now. And now all of a sudden, these thoughts in your mind, what, man, I need to get something to drink. Why don't I, why don't I start doing this? Why don't I, do, why, why don't I, why don't I start, try getting high? Or whatever it may be. Those seeds were planted in your minds. This is a, good, a big one. Seeds of low self-esteem 
and seeds of self-pity, they come to, they're intertwined. Seeds of, seeds of, seeds, but like I said again, understand what I'm saying. Most of what I'm talking about, these seeds have become plants. But we got to find out what they were first and why were they planted. And we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Seeds of lies. Of course, you know, Satan is the father of lies. He told lies to Adam and Eve in the garden that caused them to disobey God. Okay, so we know that the devil is the father of lies. Okay, now, see, look at this picture. And look, and look at this picture. This lady seems to be stressed out. Now, let's, let's talk about something else now. So now, why were these evil seeds planted in the first place? Now, understand, every seed, every negative seed that was planted in your life have not already been revealed. And we're going to get into that in a few minutes. Okay? When were these seeds planted? Some were planted when you were just, like I said, just a child. Some were planted during elementary school. You might have some bad experience in elementary school, bad experience in high school, middle school. And none when, when teenagers or young people have bad experience in school. If some of those experiences don't change, the enemy can use that as a seed later on in your life. I think in my heart, I may be wrong, I think a lot of young women have very little self-esteem in their life because they were seed planted a long time ago by the enemy that made them feel that their self-worth was that little self-worth and they never dealt with that. They never had their mother and father never really gave them the encouragement they need as a young person. And as they go older, they begin to look to other people for that encouragement and they don't find it. So many I believe a lot of young ladies, a lot of young men have low self-esteem because those seeds were sown a long time ago. I believe a lot of young people are, have violent nature because those seeds were sown a long time ago and they were never dealt with. They were never plucked up by the root. So, so they remain. And so, and some of the seeds, some seeds were sown, some seeds were sown while you became teenagers. And of course, some are, so, are, just, are just very fresh right now as you are adults. So we're going to talk about that. So about, think about, why were these seeds sown in the first place? Why, you don't know, why were these seeds sown? Here's why. The devil knew that God had a well thought out plan for, your, for our lives. And the devil wants to destroy it. That's why the seeds were planted. And we're going to also find out, you're going to find out guys, some other things that go along. St. John 10.10 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. He will not rip your heart out of anything that says hope. He will not rip out of your heart anything that says you have, you have, that you can make it. He will not rip out every thought in your mind that is a possibility that you can live victorious. That's why Satan planted all these seeds in your life that many have, have become plants now. And the only way you're going to get them out now, we got to pluck them up on the roof. So guys, there are thoughts. There are thoughts. There are thoughts. And many of your thoughts have been there for a long time. And they have to be fleshed out only to the Word of God. Why do you ever thought of this? The reason why you may think of yourself in a negative way sometimes is because the, those seeds were planted there. And they, you got, they got to come out. Now, St. John, again, St. John said, 10, 10 said, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, But Jesus said, But I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Satan and the devil have two opposite missions. The thief plants negative. Hopeless, violent, degrading thoughts. Now I'm talking about degrading thoughts. Let me tell you, I'm gonna give you a big seed, right? And a lot of young people, you might you can reject it if you want to. Today, one of the one of one of the one, one of the more prevalent seeds that Satan has planted today in the young man, especially African American men and, and uh African American young African American women, those seeds are planted through hip hop music. That the, that music is it, it, is prayed over by satanic people, and that is all designed to destroy your mind. All it does, it, it, you know, today, today, a lot of black men, African black men, they don't call women women anymore. 
They now call him the B word. And guess what? His hunting tail is satanic. Now you have a lot of our young African American women on Facebook. All they talk about the other women, they call them the B word. Do you know what's happening? Because what's happening is this music is satanic, and this new and the seeds from this music has gotten into your into your thought pattern. And now you got African American women that are looking at not only look they're looking at other women as the, the B word, but guess what? Subconsciously, the same way you're looking at that woman, you're looking at yourself. And that's why a lot of African American women carry themselves like tramps because you need to break away from the hip hop. You need to get away from the satanic stuff. You need, and you ask God to deliver you from those negative seeds and go on and have a victorious life. Now, so the thief plans negative, hopeless, violent, degrading, underprivileged thoughts in our mind. The thief wants us to feel victimized. He wants us to feel, be jealous. This is what the thief does. Now, which I, I, I said earlier that all of these seeds, all of these plants in your life, negative plants, they don't always come out right then. We're going to read something to show you what I'm talking about. So in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 says, The kingdom of heaven is, is like a man who sowed good seeds in the field. Good seeds, just like some of you young people, you sow good seeds. You don't go around beating yourself up all the time. You sow good seeds. But while a man slept, while you were sleeping, someone came and started sowing negative seeds in your life. But while a man slept, the enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. So the enemy comes in, and when he does, he sows negative seeds into our lives. Verse 25, 6 says, But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appear. So now, here's the question, young people. I have to get this question. Why do you, as a young woman, some of you, feel so negative about yourself? Why do you, some young, young men, feel so negative about yourself? Why do you feel so insecure about yourself? Why do you feel so insecure? Why do you feel the need to listen to music that's going to degrade you? Why do you feel the need to take sides with someone that's doing the wrong things? Why do you feel the need to live a violent life? Why do you feel the need to take your life? Why do you feel the need to stay in an abusive relationship? Why do you feel why do you feel the need? Why do you feel the need? Why do you why do you feel helpless? Why do you feel hopeless? Well, all these feelings, all these thoughts, is because the enemy has come and sown seeds. Now, verse 28 says, And he said to them, An the enemy has done this. And I'm here to tell you, young people, the truth is that the enemy has done this. The enemy has come and he has polluted your mind by virtue of planting many negative seeds in your life. And you have got to come to a point in life and go right now to realize I have been tricked by the enemy. I am not what the enemy said I am. If you're a young lady, I am not worthless. I am not ugly, but, but I was created just the way God wants me to be. A young man, hey, same thing. But here's the thing. Something has to happen with these seeds. Something has to happen. Something has to take place with these seeds. Now, good seeds. Good seeds are seeds of forgiveness. Seeds of uh, assertiveness. Seeds of unity, seeds of help, seeds of responsibility, seeds of faith, seeds of faithfulness, seeds of self-control, seeds of honesty, seeds of, of being respectful, seeds of honor, being honorable, seeds of being confident, confident in God's word that God has a plan for your life. Young lady, you're not what you think you are. Now. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to back up on that. The word of God says, as a man thinks, so is he. That if you think you're no good, that's how you're going to act. If you think you never have a husband, every man that comes along, some, there's some you, you're going to run away, you're going to run away, and you're going to run them away. If you think that you can't be successful in life, then guess what? You may eventually get there, but you got to get with that, that 
thought pattern. A lot, a lot of times people use the term stinking thinking, which is okay what they use, but I want to let you know not that you got to get rid of it and God will replace it with his word so you can speak faith. You got to begin to speak life of your life. You got to learn to speak victory in your life. You got to, you got to learn to understand that the devil is out to destroy you. If those of you young people think that you can live this life apart from Jesus Christ, you are kidding yourself. Because you are going to run into a walking hot spot pretty soon and realizing that life is not worth trying to live without Jesus Christ in your life. You need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus in your life. So, now, St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, and this, is, and this is how God is going to get rid of some of the negative seed. They're no longer seeds again. They were seeds and they should now they, they, now they become their yeah, roots. They got to be plucked up from the root now. Because some of them have been in your thought pattern for this so long. Negative thinking. Violent thinking. Poverty thinking. Poverty stricken attitude. And it's very common among the African American. Poverty thinking. Not only do you think poverty for yourself, you think if anybody else is going to be staying in poverty too. You don't want to come out of poverty, you want anybody else to stay in poverty too. That is a very, very dangerous thought pattern. Now, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you, your thinking has got to change. How do you think it change? Begin to say what the Word of God is saying about you. The, word, the Bible says, you're more than a conqueror. You feel defeated? Say, no, the Word of God says, I'm more than a conqueror. Okay, I thought I thought of the feet coming. That thought of the feet coming needs to know. I, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You gotta begin to refute the devil's lies with the word of God. Young people, you got to start learning to fight back. Or your generation is gonna be crushed. You gotta learn to fight back with God's word. Or young man, or your generation are gonna be crushed. Not even gonna get off the nowhere. I'm not gonna go nowhere. You are probably the generation that are going to bring this gospel back to where it's going to be. A lot of older people who have been trusted with this Bible, who have been trusted in this, this office of ministry, uh, many of them have made the Word of God seem to be like a toy. They've used the office for their own personal gain and they've kind of just distorted the gospel. But God is calling you to come out of yourself, young people, and, and come into Him and let Him use you. Now, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 18 and 21, it says, Death and life are, at the, are in the power of the tongue, and he that loves it will eat it. So, you, if you speak God's word, every time you speak God's word on your life, you're speaking life to yourself. Every time you repeat what the devil say, you're speaking death on yourself. Choose to speak life. They okay? choose to speak life. These are good seeds. These are good seeds. Now, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go over any more scriptures, but I'm gonna say this, because I think this is very important. You need to be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. If you found yourself in this video of one of the things I said about these thoughts about these seeds, then you know what? You need to take action right now. Because you know what? Number two was, what? Well, St. John 10 and 10? Talk about kill, destroy. You talk about stealing. The enemy wants to steal your joy. I'm telling you, young man, the enemy will steal the, the husband that God had for you because of your bad, your bad attitude. Young man, the enemy will steal the job, that job you want from you because of your bitter attitude. The enemy will, 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 will be able to steal from you young people because of your own attitude. Because your negative attitude won't allow people to be able to help you. And if you have a negative attitude, you won't open up yourself to receiving help. It's no lie. Young people today between the age of 21 and 30 are going through some tremendous hard times, but a lot of the seeds, a lot of the negative thought, a lot of the thought of the feet were planted in your life long time ago, you, and you just, you didn't have the knowledge. 
Satan began to plant negative seeds in your life way before you understood a scripture. But now you need to understand. These negative thoughts originated from seeds that were sown by the enemy and the purpose was to interrupt the God intended plan for your life. Now what you gonna do? You got to do something young people. I'm tired of walking, I, I see a lot of things in this sand. So many of our young men and young women are just so down with themselves. Just so down with themselves. No pride in themselves. Just walk the street any kind of way. You know, uh, we got our women now, they're so vulgar on Facebook, they're calling each, what, I mean, you know, and the sad thing that we had to fight so long to get men, African American men, to call, call each other the N word. Now we got a problem with our African American women. They just go off. You know, this, this be, this be, this be, this be. How, if, if you're a woman and you're calling the next person that, then what do you go think you are? You can only speak what you are. It's time for you to wake up and realize you've been deceived. It's time to wake up and realize that you've been in a trance. It's time to realize that the enemy is not playing with you. With you. He's out to take you. He's out to destroy you. He plant these negative seeds. There are negative seeds that some people, and African American people too, have against their own race of people because it's been a negative. Anything, anything the enemy can use as negative, he planted in our mind. If you believe that you were raised in poverty and that that's what you have to stand for, then you're going to try to drag everybody else into poverty. But you know what? If you change your thinking, you believe that, you know, we can come out of this. I can do all things to Christ Jesus. God has something better for me than this. I'm not going to settle for this. And that's the attitude you got to get. That means, how do I get a better attitude? First of all, the seed, the, the seed that has to be plucked, I mean, the, the, the the planet, the, the, net, the thoughts, the evil thoughts got to be pulled out by the root, and that's through the Word of God. Speaking the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, through prayer, trusting God, and then disassociating yourself from negative people. Disassociating yourself as far as possible from the hip-hop garbage that's just tearing up the African-American culture. It's just tearing up the culture. It's changed. The language has changed. You got a language, and you look at the language, right? The language stinks because the la there's nothing about the African American language now that really points towards success. It points towards nothing but negativity. And a man that stands for God, a man that walks the street, a woman that walks the street with some dignity, you call them uppity. They think they're better. No. It's just that everyone has not given in to the poison of the enemy. And it's time for you to come out of it, to snap out of it, and realize the enemy is robbing you. Realize that those negative seeds were planted. And now it's time for you to ask God to help you to get to help God to help you to get a new mind, change your mind. Now, the, the word of God said, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And you became a new creature, yes. But you just didn't deal with those seeds. See, those seeds came up and you said, like, wow, I'm, still th I'm a Christian, I still think like this. Because the seeds now became plants. And the enemy waited for a season to, for, to use those plants against you. Now, as, as, as a part of his spiritual warfare, to defeat you. But that's why, you know, the other day I went in the store the other day and uh, I was talking to two young people and one young lady had two little kids and I said, uh, what kids are that? She said, oh, they're both mine. And she said it in such a, a shameful way, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, well, I, I said, you know, oh, they're cute little kids, they're nice little kids, right? When I left, when I went home, I went to pray for her because that's an example of how her enemy will beat you down and tell you, you know what, yeah, you you got two children, no husband, you got this, you got this, or you have this, you don't have a job, you don't have this. The enemy will just try to crush us if we allow him to do. Okay, but we got to learn to fight back with the word. Again, negative seeds. 
will rob you of everything God has for you. They, they got to, not only once they become plants, they have to be plucked up from the root. We have to get to the root of the matter. We have to get to the root of the issue. And you know, it's sad to say, a lot of, a lot of young people, you don't come to church anymore. And you use the excuse because, you know what, the pastors are phony, and they've done so many things, the people that have stolen from the church, and all that is true. But let me tell you what, God did not change when that pastor changed. If that pastor chose, or that minister chose to steal from that church, or they chose to go into adultery and uh, have a relationship outside, the, outside their marriage, just because they did that, God didn't change. God hasn't changed the mind about you. It's just that you got to understand that you need to allow God to work on you. Allow God to do a new thing in your life. Okay? And so, there's a process. There's a process. And then, you need people, you need to surround yourself with people who are going to sow good seeds in your life. Seeds of life. Okay? People are going to tell you that, you know what? You can do better in this area. People are going to tell you, who are going to care about you, are going to tell you, you know what? Put more effort into it. People are going to tell you, you know what, young lady? Get on the weight program. If you want to, if you want to lose weight, get on the weight program. I'm going to talk about it. People are going to tell you, young man, if you really want to finish your degree, then you know what? If you can only take two classes at a time, go take two classes. People are going to tell you, young lady, you know what? Even though this, you were lied to by some that young man, have lied to you and said some evil things that you're on his way out, you're still a beautiful person. You're still a princess. You still can go on your life. God got something for you. People like that, with people that are gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna sow good seeds in your life. But people who don't want anything, and people who are negative, and don't want to see you anyway, those kind of people, little by little, you have to let them go. Because they'll do nothing but sow negative seeds in your life. Okay, so I pray that something in this video would touch your life. It's a shame how we allow the enemy to rob us. And, he, and, and, and by the thought that the many thoughts that he's sown in our in our minds. Every day we gotta flush our minds out. Each and every day. May the Lord continue to bless your life. See you next time.